Chris, Regis. how are you doing? How are you doing? Hi. Chris, nice to meet you. you. Have you been with us on the show before? Or Not is this your first time? in this time? lifetime. Okay, no. good. Sit down. No, no, no I've thank never you for Chris having me. I feel like I, I know you. It. I've seen you so many times. Am I dressed okay for you're this show? You're fine. No, you're yeah, fine. You no, I great. don't have anything in my closet that I think is noble enough to wear on this show. I am a huge fan of this show, and so is my wife. And so this is an honor, a thrill, and the most exciting thing that's happened in my life lately. So. Oh, my God. Oh, boy. I like I mean a that sincerely. I like a grateful guest, you yeah. know what I mean? I mean it sincerely. I really do. Now, now you started working on David's show, huh? Yeah, that's right. Um, 1982, I actually started as a runner on the show, now, making $200 a week. A runner? What does that mean when David said, coffee? <laughs> Make it black? You ran. And they, that's they exactly the way he used to say it, too. <laughs> It's amazing. Uh, Where did you run to? Uh, to the coffee machine <laughs> and to uh, and to the Xerox machine, and um, I screwed that up enough times so they made me a writer. Well, you know, <laughs> you know, I mean, I do the same thing with Gilman. <laughs> Little cream. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm crying out loud. Now is Gilman 15 years old? How old is Gilman? He was 15 when he started on our show. No, he's a little older than he's that. He's a little older. No, right? he's uh, he's getting older and older every there day. He is. Yeah, there he is, right there. there. He is. But so you had a meteoric rise eh, from runner, and then how did you progress on the show means. into a writer? <laughs> Uh, well, actually, uh, the other writers, before I was a writer, were, were already putting me into little bits on the show. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, the first thing I did on Late Night was uh, I modeled a, a big garbage suit. Uh -huh. and, uh, and, and it's funny because the night that that show, you couldn't see my face, and the night that that show was broadcast, um, there was a, a mess up in the uh, tape room, and that portion of the show was blacked out. Oh, great. And uh, so Dave had me on the next night in the same garbage suit, but this time you could see my face. And uh, he asked me how disappointed I was from the night before, and I, I said terrible, and I had people in the audience, and, uh, and, he, and he asked me, uh, <laughs> well, what, yeah, he asked critics. <laughs> he asked me, uh, you know, well, what did they say to you after your performance last night? And, and I said to him, well, they said it was the funniest thing they had seen in North America. Uh huh. <laughs> and and Dave laughed really hard at that. He liked and, that. And uh, <clears throat> and I knew right at that moment. Well, if I can make Dave, Dave laugh, laugh, which is a feat in exactly, itself. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, then, especially then... the old Dave. <laughs> the new the new Dave yeah. is laughing all the time. That's true. He's... Nobody's yeah. happier than the new Dave. Yeah. The, the phrase I... laughing but the all old the way Dave, to the bank. The, yes. Kind of comes to the mind. old Dave was a tough one to make laugh. That's he true. had such a quirky sense of humor, and so do you. Do you do you think he was a, a big influence? Oh, he was. You know, I was I was thinking the other day when I got <laughs> there, I was I guess 22. I don't think I had a sense of humor. <laughs> I really don't think I did. I, and, uh, very um, unfunny runner. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I, I took the coffee very seriously. Sure, sure. Absolutely. That was your job. It's not but uh, then you, something you, to joke about. You became a regular on the show, the panicky guy. Uh, right. Well, after these writers started putting me in, um, uh, uh, they started having me come out of, uh, as the panicky guy, the conspiracy guy. And, <laughs> and then they made me a writer, and then it was a lot easier because I just wrote myself into the sure, show. Sure, why not? <laughs> Anytime you wanted to be on, you just wrote That's your... right. That's right. Now you started making uh, little movies. I, I know you were... Yeah, well, We just on... watched you the other night, as a matter of fact, on Groundhog Day. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was very yeah. funny, Chris. Funny. You yeah. had the camera guy... I'm terrible guy. in that movie. No, but you had the camera guy down yeah. cold. That's well, the that's way they nice. are. Well, I spent about three years studying it. <laughs> <laughs> and you perfected it. I pinched it. a nerve <laughs> carrying one of those cameras. These guys, I have... I know. You know, uh, a lot of uh, respect for these guys sure. carrying these things. They are heavy, and, and I pinched a nerve, and I didn't want to tell anybody because it was the first day of shooting. <laughs> and, and I had to hold this camera like this, and, and I, I went home to the hotel and just sort of walked around like that, <laughs> you know, for the whole time. And, and Didn't want to break character. Yeah, no, but a lot of cabs pulled up. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, so they had to gut the camera for me. But, uh, uh, yeah, I'm horrible in that movie, but it's a great movie. I, I think it's Bill Murray's Well, so let's movie. talk about your new movie now, Cabin Boy. Oh, you're a cupcake for bringing that up. <laughs> he is a cupcake, isn't he? But it seems to me the plot is vaguely familiar, right? <laughs> it's familiar. It's, uh, it, it's somewhat similar to, to Captain's Courageous, uh -huh. which is an old favorite movie of mine. And uh, it uh, follows the story of a rather obnoxious uh, a brat who uh, graduates rich from spoiled a, kid. a rich spoiled kid who graduates from a, a foppish finishing school and he's sent to Hawaii to take over his father's business and uh, ends up getting on the wrong boat with a bunch of 
overweight. Ne'er do well. Yeah, Not well, right, uh, yeah, foul mouthed <laughs> fisherman is what uh -huh. he ends up with. So, what do they make? Uh, uh, they make him a menial. Uh, yeah, yeah. They say he has to stay with them, and uh, he becomes the cabin boy, and they end up going into this sort of Bermuda Triangle area called Hell's Bucket, and there's all sorts <laughs> of creatures that they uh, really? encounter. Uh, does this build way. character? Do you end up being a much better person for this experience? He learns. Or the truth of life from these, <laughs> right, these, from the, message from movie, these don't fat you? fishermen. <laughs> these yeah. guys are that rough, huh? That's right. Well, let's take a, a look now at a clip of uh, Chris Elliott being abused by yes. this crew in yeah. a scene from Cabin Boy, oh. son of Captain's Courage. <laughs> do -si -do. Bunch of lunkheads. Trina! Oh. oh! Trina, I'm so glad you decided to join us. I was just putting on a little show for the fellas here. So this is what you guys do for fun? Yeah. Humiliate an imbecile? <laughs> yeah. Sure, he's clumsy and he's stupid and he's a screw-up. But you don't have to treat him like an animal. You know, uh, Trina, it's funny you should mention screw-ups because um, about an hour ago I made the mistake of using your swimming diary to light the stove. <laughs> I've been keeping that diary for 15 years, you ape! Well, dance, boy! Dance! <laughs> Chris, don't let your wife see that. <laughs> That's pretty much what life is like at my household. Oh, my gosh! <laughs> you know, it just breaks me up. Yeah, well, but it's... There's something sad about it. Well, it is. There's She's right. You were a human being. You can't be treated like an animal. <laughs> Well, I win her over towards the end of the movie. Oh, I bet you do. Like Steve yes. Martin's The Jerk, only yes. worse. Well, I've been, I've been called that many times. So. Not exactly something Cary Grant would turn no. down. You know no, I mean? no, no. Uh, I, I guess I play kind of a cross between Freddie Bartholomew and Peter Lawford. Yes. I think that's as close as I can see that. Letterman has a cameo in this? Yeah, Dave uh, has a cameo. There's a lot of uh, cameos. My dad has a cameo in it. Uh, Ricky Lake uh, actually plays the figurehead of the boat that comes to life. <laughs> uh, and uh, there's Rusty. Tamblin, who is in uh, West Side Story, sure. actually plays Chalky, who's a half man, half shark. He's uh, <laughs> sort of the biological offspring of a, a relationship now, that now, I don't want to go into. But. Now, Chris, I know what a problem it is to sell anything in Hollywood. Sure. When you went with the treatment or the premise or whatever it was that you put down on a couple of pages, <laughs> did you have trouble explaining I this? I can't type, Regis. <laughs> you pages. just went in and ad-libbed this to the studio heads? There? Well, luckily, we didn't have to go into the guys in the suits. We had to go in and sit with Tim Burton and, oh, uh, oh. because he produced the movie. Oh. And um, but it, it was interesting because we we sat uh, Adam Resnick who who wrote with me on uh, late night and created Get a Life with me. We, we went in and, and I, we spoke to Tim and he sat there stone faced throughout the whole thing. <laughs> and uh, you know I, I started sweating and started <laughs> you know shaking uncontrollably. <laughs> and then uh, suddenly at the end he was bouncing off the walls, literally, and taking a sketch pad and drawing what See? the six-armed woman should look like. Yes, and, you and finally got stuff. to him. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. the right guy for this kind of yeah. a movie. Yeah, no, we knew that right away. And so that's a Disney product, huh? It's a, yeah, Disney touchdown. All right, terrific. Okay, good luck to them, okay? You bet. Thank you. Cabin Boy, opening today all around America. We'll be right back in a moment.